What's up everyone, I'm back again because we have another Yeti bike being launched today. Oh yeah! Welcome the all new Yeti SB120. The way Yeti describes this new bike is, quote, forget the numbers, mute the speculation, let other guys invent cute alternatives for cross country, steer clear of pigeonholes and limiting beliefs, strap on your blinders and go get lost. Then decide what the SB120 means to you and you alone. So what does that mean? The new SB120 does not really fit into a specific category, but because I know you and every bike media outlet out there will put it into the cross country slash trail category, we can loosely call it that. So real quick, let's get into how we got to this most recent offering from Yeti. If you have an AARP card and or are currently retired, you may remember the 2003 Yeti Coco Pelli. It had less than 100mm travel, rim brakes, was handmade in the USA with Easton tubing, that's aluminum, and only weighed 5.6 pounds. And yes, I realize how little it has in common with the new bike today, but it is the ancestor of the SB120 and you've got to know your roots. Jumping all the way to 2011, we have the Yeti ASR 5C, which boasts a full carbon frame, 127mm travel, 142mm hub spacing, and is much more closely related to the SB120 in riding intent and technology. Moving right along to 2017, we get a much more focused and even closer relative in the SB45C. Here we get a Switch Infinity equipped frame with 114mm of travel, optimized for one by drivetrains, tapered head tube, and boost hub spacing. However, Yeti decided to give it a 140mm travel fork and a 67 some odd degree head angle. So most important to note here is you can already start to see the makings of a cross country oriented bike with more capability than most of the other bikes in its category. A year later, we got the Yeti SD100 with you guessed it, 100mm of travel out bag paired with a 120mm fork up front. El Jefe at Yeti, Chris Conroy's mission was to see how capable they can make a cross-country bike. This model still only weighed 25 pounds, so you could race it, but it also had clearance for 2.4 inch tires, which was almost unheard of at the time. 2021 brings us to the Yeti SB115, an evolution of the SB100 with a new rocker link for slightly more travel, now aimed at multi-day stage races just like the BC bike race. The defined lines of what this bike is continue to blur even further. Can you race cross-country on it? Sure. Is it also a trail bike? Yes. Can you build it light? Yes. And can you put big mini tires on it? Also, yes. So what the f*** is this bike? Well, it seems like you, the consumer, didn't even know where to place it. It did a little bit of everything pretty well and that may have been its Achilles heel, as it wasn't the most popular bike for us in the cross-country segment. Okay, back to the all new SB120. At the risk of sounding cliche, this 120mm travel bike is supremely capable and does more things than its spec sheet would suggest. Like its predecessors, the SB120 is light, can climb, and is now more fun and capable to center than ever before, making it really punch outside its weight class in that regard. So who's it for? F***ing everyone. If you're like me and love long travel enduro bikes, great, this will make for the ideal other bike. Are you a moderate trail rider who doesn't need a longer wheelbase and the slacker angles of most mid-travel trail bikes? This is the one bike solution. There's literally countless reasons why you could justify owning this bike, but the most important one is that it makes every part of riding fun. Doesn't get much better than that. And just like in our SB160 video, we sat down with Chris Heath, head honcho of sales at Yeti, to discuss the merits of the new bike. Check it out now. How's it going, everyone? We're here at Yeti again in uh, Golden, Colorado with Chris Heath. Uh, we're here to go over the new SB120. Uh, it is release day. We are super stoked about this. I am very excited about this bike, probably the most excited of their new releases this year. It's an aggressive, short travel, cross country trail bike. I mean, what what is it, Chris? Uh, you know, it's, it's a bike that's uh, ready to do it all, you know, but it definitely fits into that shorter travel category. Um, light, snappy, efficient, stage races, uh, everyday backyard grips, kind of whatever you want to throw at it, you know? I mean, the, the kind of something that we talk about across our line is that, you know, the bikes aren't really defined. They don't live within a silo. They can kind of do whatever they, you know, whatever the rider wants them to do. Um, obviously being a 120 out back and 130 up front, you know, it's going to uh, kind of fit into certain categories, like you mentioned, like a short travel trail bike, cross country, down country, there's you, sure. know, you name it, right? A million like all categories. The, all the names you want to throw out the category, but uh, but yeah, we're super pumped for this bike. It's a, a bike that we've you know we've been stoked to we're stoked to launch. Yeah, I think one of the coolest parts about this thing, or what excites me the most, is like like you said, this bike doesn't pigeonhole itself in that in any one category. I mean, sure, down country, cross country trail, whatever you want to say, but. If you want to do an enduro ride, or if you want to do a cross country race, or you want to do anything in between that stuff, it is down, right? Like it's yeah. more than capable. You can do it. It's got enough travel. I mean, it's not going to be like a long travel enduro right. bike, but the geometry is such that it'll let you be balanced on the descents and it'll let you have confidence. And yeah, I, I think we wanted to strike a balance between, you know, I feel like there's a trend in, you know, in bikes right now, and whether it's these short travel trail bikes where it's 
you know, ultra slack and all, you know, right. And, and I think we want to be careful with that. I mean, 66 and a half degrees at the head tube is slack, but it's not crazy. And I think that lends to a real neutral, you mentioned a neutral riding position, neutral feel both on ups and downs. And then paired with our, our new size specific rear end, the size specific C tube angles, you know, this bike's available extra small to X, uh, double XL, which is pretty rad. So we should be able to, you know, really accommodate those smaller, those taller riders, you know, with those C-tube angles and with that positioning as you kind of, as the line, the bikes grow in size. Yeah, there's such a, a fine line, like you said, getting the balance between head tube angle, rear, rear stay length. But yeah, the cool thing about this one, you know, not, not to jump ahead or get into like builds, but, you know, we do offer, you know, our standard builds, like our T-series builds, T1, T3, are going to come with a um, 34 grip two, which is pretty rad. So we haven't really done that. You know, I know there was clamoring for it on the 115 and like you got to put that damper in that you know on yeah, that bike and for sure so we're stoked to, to offer that so i think that kind of lends to the you know um the capability of this bike for sure um, but we also go up to a you know in our t4 build which is going to be like our xx axis uh carbon wheel stock you know we go to a dropper an sl dropper post uh fit for a fork but we're trying you know we're showing that it can also hit a weight so you know it really is um, a bit of a pocket knife when it comes to, you know, you can build it really light and you can kind of leave it as stock and it can be more of an all around trail charger type thing. Yeah, it's really awesome. You guys are showing the T4 build with like the super lightweight yep. race build because of the capability. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I know where we are in Santa Cruz, like the grip, grip two, 130 yep. is like, that was the fork for a right. bike like this. And that's right. what at least all our customers are asking for. Um, and it's, it's, we're super amped to see it on this bike. Cause it's, this setup is like, perfect for, you know, yeah. the slightly less gnarlier yep. trails where we are. And I think, you know, and, and I've always been a one bike quiver kind of, you know, kind of guy and, and you know, 150 has been my bike of choice, but um, this was the bike when I saw it, I was like, man, this is tempting me to, you know, expand that quiver and have two bikes Yeah, because it's different enough um, to where I feel like, you know, if you are a, if you're a solid rider, it's really going to reward those inputs and really reward pumping and speed and yep. cornering and it's going to be really just an, an intuitive trail feel um which are, which are you know that's that's similar across our line but with these shorter travel bikes you know that's more pronounced yeah i mean even the 115 was so good at being a proper trail bike like excluding you know labels right like you just buy the 115 and you ride it on aggressive and not so yep. aggressive trails it does a good job everywhere and this one is just again a an improvement on that right it'll do everything the 115 did but better yeah, and, and sticking to our, you know, kind of standard spec, you know, real tires front and rear, you know, we're going DHF aggressor on there, um, which is awesome. So kind of trail ready out of the box. Like we mentioned the fork, the grip two damper there, solid DPS shock out back. And then, you know, the changes that we've made uh, across the rest of our line, right? The co-molded bottom bracket, size specific rear ends, size specific C2 bangles, um, you know, new link. This kind of this guy actually has a micro shock extender, which is really cool. Um, you know that does a whole a whole lot of things that you can you know check out the website and kind of dive more into the yeah. that. But yeah, you know, kind of keeps that silhouette of the new bikes that down tube tucked in there. Um, you know, the cable captures here, where you know obviously that's going to be good for electronic or cable. Um, the bikes are actually going to come with a little bag of um, of parts that you can swap in and out of. So you know, just kind of all those little details that we've thought out. I feel like is going to be appreciated by both dealer and customer. You checked all the boxes this round, right? Like grip two, 130, 120 mil travel. I'll touch real quick on the travel thing again, because I feel like it's such a constant conversation. Um, the difference in travel between 115 and 120 is five millimeters, right? Like that five mil of travel within the suspension design, when you include leverage curve, when you include like um, the leverage ratios and all that stuff and the shock tune, like that makes a difference in the end experience. And I feel like people just stop at the spec again. Like you guys touched literally everything on this bike between 115 and 120 from the tube set to oh, the geometry yeah. to like the bearings, like literally everything was touched. Um, I want people to get past that just by miller travel difference. Yeah. I mean, this, this bike is, is, I mean, all the bikes are new, sure. you know, but this is probably the newest bike, you know, just maybe forward facing, right? right? Because the one, you know, it looks drastically different than the 115, like updated switch, sure. you know, that the other bikes get, whether that's, you know, dust caps, uh, updated bearings, you know, everything was done uh, to increase smoothness, increase efficiency. Um, you know, the, the new collet axle system, um, again, drilling out those tolerances, getting rid of those tolerances, making everything, um, you know, eliminate binding, have everything act smoothly, right? And th that all yields trail feel. Yeah, no, I'm super excited to get on it. I really want to um, borrow one maybe later <laughs> today. We'll figure it out. 
Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll find a way. We'll, we'll be able to get you guys some for, for launch, so. Yeah. yeah. Definitely stop in and check them out. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, I guess that brings us to the end. Thanks guys for watching. Um, thanks, Chris, for having us again. Yeah, thanks for being here. Checking out the new 120. It is launch day, you guys. So come to the store, check out our website, and the bike is amazing. Uh, throw a leg over it, you can see for yourself. See ya. I feel like if people saw me drinking burger and coffee, they would totally discredit any knowledge I had. Of like, <laughs> especially like the cycling community, they'd be like, that guy drinks burger and coffee? <laughs> that dude, he doesn't know shit about bikes. Yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. That sounds like you drink burger and coffee for sure. Ah. Uh.